We have 630. If the commissioners will rest your presence by voting yes, please. <clears throat> Mr. Burkhalter. Mr. Clerk. <clears throat> you have 20 present, one absence, you have a quorum. Thank you. <clears throat> this time I'll read the emergency evacuation procedure. In the event of an, emer an emergency, an alarm will sound. Everyone should exit the building by the nearest stairwell in a safe and effective manner. If the nearest st <coughs> stairwell is blocked by smoke, use the other stairwell. Do not use the elevator. Once you've reached the main floor, follow the exit signs to exit the building and quickly proceed away from the building. Please be mindful of others evacuating and of emergency vehicles. Mr. Clerk, if you'll read the call, sir. Notice of public hearing in accordance with Tennessee Code Annotated Section 13-7-105, the Board of County Commissioners of Blount County, Tennessee, will convene in a cold meeting and hold public hearing on December 11, 2012 at 6.30 p.m at the Blount County Courthouse Commission meeting room for the following proposed amendments to the zoning regulation resolution of Blount County, Tennessee, being resolution 00-06-010, a resolution to amend the zoning resolution of Blount County, Tennessee, by adding a new section 7.18, design standards for commercial campground and recreational vehicle parks, amend sec sections 9.1b, 9.2B and 9.3B to include commercial campground and recreational vehicle parks and amend section 13 to include definitions for camping cabins and commercial campgrounds. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. At this time, anyone wishing to make public comment, please come forward and we'll start in the front. The lady in the front row, if you'll come forward. And please give your name. Your address is not necessary. Your name only. Upon hearing that the revised campground regulations are once again on the commission agenda, I decided to look at my file on this issue for historical perspective. The first time I have record of RV campground park request was October 2009 with a subsequent public hearing. From that date on, the citizens of Blount County consistently raised objections to all versions of this proposal. Concerns include lighting, noise, safety, garbage, nuisance to neighbors, length of stay for trailers, number of trailers, density, access road safety, large number of roads in the proposal, proximity to creeks and rivers, proximity of campsite compromising rural areas with higher density, 210 day a year camping permits, et cetera, et cetera. It has been three years and the citizens have been consistent in their objections. Here are some of the newspaper articles that back that up. County convenes campsite hearing, campground proposal question, campground plan needs more work, county commission punts proposal on campground. I have personally spoken to the commission several times opposing the regulations and their revisions. The first paragraph carries the real problem. Quote, properly located in the community where street access and capacity and other infrastructure are favorable for higher density development. Well, this higher density development doesn't jive with R2 standards. Other inadequate changes, trailer stay changed from 270 days to 210 days. I don't get 210 days. There's a reason the Smoky Mountain campgrounds have a two week limit and so should we for these campgrounds. Another major problem, these are designated areas that are significant to tourism, these wonderful major corridors into our um, scenic areas. The most popular spot in this area is Cades Cove, which is an undeveloped area. So I have real concern about taking our scenic routes and developing them with higher density development as stated in the first paragraph of this regulation. Another concern is the buffering. 
While eight-foot fence offers little protection when one is above looking down on a campground, and there's a lot of places along these scenic highways where the land is lower than the highway, so you would be looking down on the campground. Perhaps we could mitigate some of this damage if we work closely with organizations like the Arbor Society to plant trees and some way, um, in some way protect our scenic environment. There's other problems. Changing the, the waterways from 10 to 25 feet is really not very much protection for our waterways. So in summary, I'd just like to say that this proposal has been around for years. Now it has minor adjustments. Please listen to the citizens and once and for all drop this proposal. Hi, I'm Clarice Pearson. Thank you for the time. And I wrote to several of you, and I appreciate everybody that responded to my emails. I'm also against the campground proposition moving forward. I am a resident of Blunt County, and actually I live on 411 North. And I can tell you, just trying to pull my car or my husband's truck out onto 411, sometimes you almost have to get into the other lane. And a two-foot shoulder, you know, I'm sorry, it's just not there. I feel like it's dangerous. I think it could be an eyesore. And my predecessor had so many good points that I'm just going to stop there and just give my support that you drop this. Thank you. Carol Ross, District 1. The specific reason stated for these campground regulations is to provide opportunities for quality designed camp commercial campgrounds. Do these regulations emulate quality? High density commercial development in a residential area. No specific buffers to prevent lighting, noise, and other visual pollution to neighboring buildings. 210 day RV stay limit in 365 days. This violates the definition of transit in other parts of these regulations. It is defined as any person who exercises occupancy or is entitled to occupancy of any rooms, lodgings, accommodations in a hotel room or campground for a period of less than 30 days. This would lead me to ask this question, what is a 210 day RV stay? Is the stay limit for camping cabins and campgrounds implied as also 210 days? Seasonal campground workers are exempted from the stay limit. Why? The term seasonal camp worker needs to be defined. The regulations state that garbage will be addressed in the site plan, but there are no minimum standards stated. Could the garbage area be outside a bedroom window, and will the garbage truck be outside that window on an early morning run? RV storage is permitted for up to 40% of the campgrounds. This means a storage facility could be in the middle of a residential area. No maximum number of sites per acre. Campground workers employed directly by the park may live in the campsite. There is no stay limit, no requirement to find permanent housing after a specified time limit. These regulations are also to protect the public health, safety, and welfare. Do these meet the above stated goal? Placing these campgrounds in a residential area. The following roads, even with a two-foot shoulder for RVs, Old Tuckalichi Road, Old Wallen Highway, 411 North to the Blunt Severe Line, 129 to Tallahassee. Could an RV pass a school bus. What would the county's liability be if there was a wreck in, and these regulations were in effect? Lack of requirement for deceleration lanes and leaving it to the discretion of TDOT or B Blunt County Highway Department with no specific standards included. Research indicates that lengthy stays in camping areas contributes to increased crime in the area. Does this indicate 
that the 210 day stay limit might be a mistake. I'm asking that you send this back to the Planning Commission for changes that would improve and um, help the people of this county and I thank you for your time. Good evening, Commissioners. My name is Sherry Sternberg, and I live in Louisville. Uh, some years ago, my husband and I were the proud owners of a 27-foot bounder. We traveled around the United States and uh, locally as well, both for recreation and for uh, business purposes. We appreciated the availability of RV parks and used them extensively. Here are the views of myself, many of my friends and neighbors, and family members. Zoning provides predictability in land use. Changing zoning regulations to allow RV parks in zone R1 amounts to changing the rules on residents who already have an investment in their neighborhoods. Very often it's the largest financial investment they'll ever make. Not only would their property values decline, the noise, traffic, and sheer numbers of people continually moving in and out next door or down the road would severely affect their quality of life. Yes, RV parks and commercial campgrounds bring revenue to our county. But keep in mind that R2, suburbanizing and commercial zones currently accommodate them. Do we need more of them here in Blount County? We already have 10 listed in our telephone directory. There are also state park campgrounds and the Great Smoky Mountain National Park. Please focus your attentions in fulfilling the need for design standards that would apply to new construction and improvements of existing RV parks in R2, suburbanizing, and commercial zones. Remember your friends and neighbors. Do not allow campgrounds in zone R1, our rural residential areas. Please protect county residents from unwanted, incompatible commercial developments that would most certainly encroach upon our residential neighborhoods. Thank you for your time. For the ones of you that don't know me, my name's Larry Campbell. Okay, please consider the following before you approve this regulation. This regulation would allow access roads with a minimum of 18 feet of pavement with two foot shoulders to these campgrounds. Please note, the federal U.S. Department of Transportation along with the Tennessee Department of Transportation allows RVs and trailers to be eight foot six inches wide, but the U.S. Department of Transportation also allows an exception of three inches on each side for the width for these mirrors and so forth on this. Therefore, these combined width of these recreational vehicles could be nine feet wide. Without this exception, two RVs of eight foot six or a total of 17 foot passing on an 18 foot road leaves them one foot of clearance between them. The U.S. Federal Highway Administration website recommends a 12-foot lane width for travel lanes for any two-way road. If you look at the guidelines for constructions of an RV park, you will find that they recommend interior roads for two-way traffic to be 30-foot wide to allow safe passage of two RVs. And looking at the zoning regulations for Zavier County, travel trailer parks are only allowed within the Commercial One District on collector streets of 50 to 60 foot wide or at main intersections. I notice this resolution will allow RV parks and campgrounds to be located on two of our county roads, Old Tuxalichi Road and Old Wallen Highway. If you look at the Blount County official road list, you will notice that Old Tuxalichi Road is a width of 17 to 20 feet. Old Wallen Highway has a maximum width of 18 feet five, half, 18 and a half feet. 
Note, both of these roads have a width classification in the official Blount County Road uh, list of 16 foot to 20 feet. They're classified as second class roads. Remember, most of the RVs are either rented or driven sparingly by drivers who dot, do not operate them on a daily basis. Therefore, if the federal government recommends a road of, for 12 foot wide lanes or a 24 foot roadway for two way traffic, and if a 30 foot wide width is recommended for an interior road within the park design, does it make sense to allow an 18 foot wide road access roadway to these campgrounds? Also I ask you to consider the following design guidelines for these parks which we recommend should only be allowed on public sewer systems. Hi, I'm Vicki Everbach. Um, I've been aware of this issue through the years and have not spoken about it. Um, just sat and listened and waited and, and I just wanted to make sure that I talk with you about it this evening. I, it, these folks who've gone before me have raised wonderful issues that you really need to consider, safety issues, infrastructure issues. But what I want to talk about since I live in the county and I live across the river from some folks who camp there pretty regularly. Um, camping's an outside activity. I used to love to camp, but I always make it rain, so you just be glad I don't go camping anymore. Um, we're talking lights, we're talking barking dogs, campfires, of course, motorcycles, cars coming and going at all hours of the night. Um, people who live in our beautiful county should not have to live in fear that a campground is going to spring up across the street from them or next door to them. It's, it's a quality of life we need to protect and I assume that that's why we implemented zoning to begin with. So I appreciate your consideration. Uh, Mr. Chairman, with your permission, I would like to yield the first minute of my time to Mr. Campbell so he could finish his statement. Larry? Basically, uh, if you will notice guidelines for these parks, I recommend should be only allowed on public sewer system due to the wastewater test showing dangerous chemicals and drugs found in the groundwater decades after their disposal. They also recommended they be connected to a public water system to ensure a healthy water source and adequate water pressure for several people taking showers at the same time. This regulation will allow site occupancy of 210 days, seven months. Therefore, these kids could attend our schools without their parents paying any property taxes passing the costs on to us. Please require an environmental impact statement to determine the safety of the increased traffic on our rural roads and the impact of waste disposal from these campgrounds. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I speak tonight as an individual, a proud citizen of the scenic town of Louisville. I am proud to claim membership in the Raven Society, but my appeal to you is that of a private citizen. Each of you is a resident of one of our Blunt County neighborhoods. You experience the pleasure of the quality of life of our beautiful community. You serve as commissioners because you care. You care about Blunt County and its people. I had the pleasure Saturday morning of sharing with at least three commissioners the joy of Shop with a Cop at Walmart in Alcoa, a program that brings Christmas joy to many less fortunate children. You are there because you care. I know that you care about our people, young and old, and our land, that, and our land, and that is why I urge you to consider carefully what is being discussed here tonight. Do you want an RV park and or campground in your neighborhood, perhaps adjacent to your property? 
do you want the problem sure to develop from poorly planned campgrounds? Problems with RV traffic on streets not wide enough. Problems with noise, lights, garbage, odors, signage, and conduct from transients who don't have homeowners levels of community pride. Specific reasons. Commercial campgrounds do not belong in areas zoned for low to moderate residential density. 210 consecutive days of occupancy is way too long and invites other issues impacting public services, including our schools. TVA, which owns the Poland Creek property in Louisville and Great, Sp Great Smoky Mountains Park, both have specific rules which should be studied by our planning commission. Impact on neighbors' property values and quality of life. We need to be thinking about everyone's property rights. Properly planned RV parks and campgrounds are assets to our community. The resolution. My name is Brad Ansley. I'm the chair of the Raven Society. I want to thank the committee for the opportunity to voice my opinion. But I have to tell you, I feel like I'm stuck in the movie Groundhog Day. Seems like we just keep getting warmed over versions of the same ill-conceived proposal over and over again. At the Raven Society, we believe that quality camping facilities are a wonderful way for families from Tennessee and beyond to experience the awesome beauty of nature we've been blessed with in Blount County. Not, however, as set out in this proposal. It is obvious that it has not been thought out with the general population in mind, that it is too vague, that it opens up too much property for commercial development, and that it is fraught with potential negative and unintended consequences. It also goes against the Hunter Growth Study and the principles of quality growth. There have been a lot of people say a lot of good, specific, uh, technical uh, details about this, and I could go on with all of those, um, like the effect on neighbor property values, sprawl. What if it was in your backyard? What about huge septic drain fields next to our scenic rivers and waterways? How will they be policed? But that would take way too much time now and should have been considered before it was submitted for the first time. Zoning regulations should be crafted to promote and protect the safety and general welfare of the people of the community at large. Commercial, and get that I said commercial, RV parks and campgrounds of this sort are invasive, high-density developments that are best suited to areas set aside for commercial use. The Planning Commission needs to go back to the drawing board on this issue. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Linda King with Citizens for Blount County's Future. I live in District 4. Here we are for the fifth time <clears throat> discussing a campground resolution which was unanimously voted down by the Commission and sent back to the planning group. Very little has been changed, yet the planners have forwarded this resolution for your consideration again. We're still looking at a stay of 210 days, making this more of a trailer park than a tourist campground. I still remember the comment at one planning meeting where it was stated that we needed a place for migrant workers. That means that a temporary worker can camp for the school year with his kids in our public schools without contributing to our tax structure. That's not what the taxpayers of Blount County want in our community. Tourists usually t stay for a week or two. They don't take up residence. The resolution also allows for a campground to be built in areas of individual homes and neighborhoods instead of on a main major road in a commercial district where the wide roads could accommodate large trailers and motorhomes. 
It's time to put this campground plan to rest. No resolution should be allowed to be brought back before the commission over and over and over again. Thank you. Thanks for the opportunity to comment. Uh, my name is Billy Mincer. I live in the Allegheny Loop section uh, on Gribble Road near uh, Six Mile Road. Uh, about 15 years ago, uh, I served on um, an urban growth planning team of Blount County. Um, this team was a result of a state law that required every county in the state to form such teams uh, to come up with uh, urban growth or safe growth plans that, that would allow for reasonable economic development, residential growth, rural uh, ways of life. About the same time, um, Blunt County uh, adopted, citizens by vote adopted uh, zoning uh, regulations. So um, with all that in place, now we have a uh, proposed uh, resolution for amending county zoning uh, to allow high density uh, human use through the um, RV campground parks that kind of circumvent the process. Actually, I guess this is part of the process, but it seems to me that it kind of uh, uh, an amendment or a variance of um, land use planning uh, is a way to say zoning is fine except for what I want to do and I want you to make an exception for me. And for all the reasons we've heard about uh, potential impacts of such um, high density human use through uh, these uh, RV parks uh, could have a serious consequence environmentally and on the impact of neighbors that live next to these <coughs> high density use areas. So. What I think I would propose <clears throat> is that uh, we take, I'm all for camping. I'm a, I'm a landowner, I'm an outdoorsman. Uh, I like to camp. I, don't, I wouldn't call living 10 feet next for, to a uh, camping neighbor camping, but some do. But I would go back to the drawing table and I would find a way to have more stringent regulations that did allow for, for some RV campgrounds but we're more specific, and maybe you'd have to do it on a case-by-case -case basis on where such campgrounds could be allowed. Appreciate it. My name is Richard Hutchins, and there's very little that I can say that hasn't been said already. I knew that would be the case. Um, I just have a few things I'd like to mention. I've had a few conversations with some of the county commissioners who have attempted to reassure me that the only way that this resolution could get killed is if it comes to a full vote of the commissioners, at which point as if it fails, then it'll be dead. I would like to believe that. I hope that's true. But uh, I'd like to leave with a few scriptures from the New Testament from the first book of John, chapter 4, verses 7 through 11. Ponder these words from the Apostle John. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. In this was manifested the love of God toward us because that God sent his only begotten son into the world that he might live through him here in his love not that we love not that we love God but that he loved us and sent his son to be a proposition for our sins beloved if God so loved us we also to love one another verses 20 and 21 if a man say, I love God, and hateth his brother, he is a liar. 
for he knoweth not his brother whom he hath seen. How can he love God whom he hath not seen? And this commandment we have from him, that he who loveth God loveth his brother also. I've been at many of these co commission meetings and numerous commissioners have stated, if it was me, I wouldn't want this, this, this uh, campground next to my property. If that's how you feel about yourself, then be, be uh, loving to your brother and not impose that on them. If you wouldn't want it, be imposed on yourself. Thank you for your time. My name's Jay Clark. I live out uh, in Rockford on 31 and a half acres with my wife, Stacy. And um, a lot of what I was gonna say have, has already been highlighted by a few folks, so um, I'll be a little egotistical, I guess, and talk about myself for a second. Uh, I came to Merrill College in 92 and absolutely fell in love with Blunt County specifically. And um, Ever since then, tried as hard as I could to get back here, and uh, finally did about three and a half years ago. And as far as I'm concerned, I live on my uh, the house that I'm gonna die in, and uh, I'm proud to be a resident here. That said, uh, it really concerns me uh, about how we're considering this. Uh, commercial use does not belong in areas zoned for low to moderate residential density. And zoning is designed to protect the health, safety, and welfare of residents and to provide pre predictability in land use. If you uh, consider this in today's economy, like an investor, uh, you would be somewhat reluctant to invest in the stock market, given uh, the unstable and unpredictability of the market. And I think uh, changes to the zoning regulations such as this uh, in some ways does the same thing. I know it would have affected my wife and I going as aggressively as we did after what we consider our dream place to live. And so I really hope you will consider that because the impact on neighbors' property rights and values and their quality of life can be greatly, greatly affected uh, if this proposal were to go through. And just very quickly, um, if you consider the minimum 10 acre size and how many vehicles can be stored year round, uh, up to 40% of the total number of campsites could potentially uh, have vehicles on them year round. You also have a huge density of uh, a number of sites in this small area, and it's almost like having a, a small city uh, pop up next to your house. You have 10 potentially street lights. I don't want I don't want that noise or that light pollution out next to my property. And there's nothing wrong with Blount County the way it is. And we need to consider that the very few people that this proposal might benefit, there's a lot more folks out there like myself who have a lot more to lose when it comes to our property rights and our quality of life. So I hope you'll consider that uh, in considering this proposal. Thank you. Good evening, my name is Debbie Curtis and I don't have anything prepared like so many of the others had, but when I saw the um, note in the newspaper about the meeting tonight, I thought I would come and address it and give you maybe a little different perspective because I'm living the life that you're considering for others in Blount County. I live on Old Walland Highway and you see back around night, well, no, excuse me, around 2003 or 2004, we had a new um, establishment come into Old Wallen Highway. It was brought in kind of, I don't wanna say undercover, but we were told there were notices published. We were told there were signs put out, but it's funny how you live on a highway. You drive it every day. We never saw a sign announcing a new neighbor coming. Well, we got a new neighbor and I'm here as the voice of experience. Old Walland Highway is one of the most popular highways for bikers in this area. They love it. However, it's very narrow. 
When I called to express my concern about the campground that was moving into my neighborhood, I was told, oh, it'll be a really nice upscale campground. There's gonna be really nice, we're talking $200,000, $300,000 RVs that are gonna come here. It's gonna be great for the community. Well, guess what? That's not what we've seen. In addition to that, we're not on a sewer system, we're on a septic system. I was told it's a new septic system. This was approved through Nashville. We didn't even get it through the county commission here. It's in a floodplain. And we were told, oh, that, that field never floods. Well, guess what? I live on a farm in Walland. This farm has been in my family for over 200 years. We've seen that field flood many times. So we're holding our breath just waiting. So what I'm saying as the voice of experience to each of you tonight, you may not have been elected from the district of Walland, but I invite you, come to my home. I used to look out over a beautiful, rolling, picturesque countryside. Now I look out over a field that has 40 to 50 RVs just strung out in rows that are there year round. Because when they're not up on the campground site where they're supposed to be, when they're down in winter storage, they're down there just strung out everywhere. So basically what I look at now is a mobile home park. So if any of you have any interest in seeing in real life what you're considering for other areas of this county, I invite you to come to my home and let me share my views with you. Thank you very much, I appreciate you. Good evening, I'm John Carlton Templeton, Seymour. Tonight we find ourselves debating for the fourth time regulations proposed by an ad hoc committee of the Planning Commission, setting standards for introducing commercial campgrounds into the R1 district. As expected, there has been no shortage of criticism of this idea. In a word, this proposal represents bad legislation. Among its many shortcomings, the idea of identifying sites suitable for commercial campgrounds based on their proximity to another location that is considered suitable makes no sense. Suitable locations should be based on the general character of the area and identified by conditions and characteristics specific to the campground site. Let me say at this point that I am in favor <clears throat> of having campgrounds in Blunt County in fact, we already allow them in the suburbanizing, commercial, and R2 districts. It's fundamentally appropriate for a county known for its natural beauty and its status as a gateway to the Smokies to have such facilities. But the most significant feature, feature of the proposed rules, ru rules is that they would break the barrier that now excludes commercial campgrounds from the R1 district. However, I'd like to focus also on the question of why a proposal that is only minimally different from the ones that have been rejected before is being pushed across the table again. The answer is that the system is flawed. The manner of setting up these ad hoc committees results in bodies that are loaded with vested interests and special interests. The committees are not conducted in an objective and businesslike manner, but instead they start out with a directional bias based on the composition of the committee. I'd like to make three suggestions then. First, the Planning Commission needs to try to include a broader cross-section of the public in ad, ad hoc committees. Perhaps a newspaper or website notice that a committee is being formed is needed, one that invites the public to participate. Second, the Planning Commission needs more specific feedback from the County Commission as to what it sees as desirable and feasible. The Commission should not cast itself as the party of N.O but as the party of KNOW. Third, a broader public needs to step up to the plate or to the microphone as the case may be and thrust itself into the debate and into the process. Our county government is not made up of crooks and incompetence. It only does what the public allows it to do. I ask then what should be allowed? What is best for Blunt County? 
The answer to that question should come from the public first, from the Planning Commission and the County Commission. Thank you. Doug Cox. Um, I know some of you, others I don't. I live on top of the world. <clears throat> I've lived in uh, Happy Valley, Townsend, Maryville. Came to Blount County in 1967 after the military. Went to Maryville College and have never wanted to leave. And I'm here. I have a place uh, that I've developed. Uh, it's a rural area on top of the world, about 80 acres. And I intend for that to be there for my children, my grandchildren. So I guess my appeal in part is, think about posterity. We have designated part of this land to be rural and scenic and beautiful and green, to renew us, renew our spirits. So what are we doing now to change that? And how are we changing it? And how do we look ourselves and our children in the eye with whatever decision we make? It's an important decision. It seemed like we're nibbling away at what we said we wanted to do. <clears throat> I serve on uh, Plan ET, and in that session, affirmed again and again and again, <clears throat> was the love of the land and the rural nature of Union County, Blount County, and Knox County, and that that should be preserved, and that pulls us into it. It pulls commercial development into it. So <clears throat> it seems like if we nibble at this, now, we run the risk of nibbling more later. There's a neighbor of mine who had 10 acres adjoining my property. And I asked him about it. I said, what do you intend to do with it? He said, I'd like to make it into an RV park. And so some neighbors of mine and I got some money together. And we bought it from him for too much money. But we did it so it doesn't become an RV park or something of that nature. And, and I'm with Jay and other people in saying we need to think about this from the point of view of who we are and what we want the community to look like. Uh, our forebears formed the Great Smoky Mass National Park years ago. There was a big fight about the commercial development of the park. A lot of people didn't want to see it made into a park. But Carlos Campbell and Jim Thompson and other people fought that battle and we have the Great Smoky Mountains National Park and we have Tennessee parks. And now we have an opportunity to keep Blount County in the rural nature that we want it to be in. So I would encourage you, all of us, to think about that when we make these decisions. I live near Look Rock Campground. It's a beautiful campground. It's underutilized. Anybody who wants to camp, RV, tents, or anything else, can come to Look Rock and camp. It's there, it's ready, it's available. So I think we've got that covered. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go ahead and move forward into the agenda meeting for this evening. Um, announcement in case of an emergency. In the event of an emergency evacuation, an alarm will sound. 
Everyone should exit the building by way of the near stairwell in a safe and effective manner. If the near stairwell is blocked by smoke, use the other stairwell. Capitalize, bold, and underlined, do not use the elevator. Once you have reached the main floor, follow the exit signs to exit the building and quickly proceed away from the building. Please be mindful of others evacuating and of emergency vehicles. Uh, my, uh, Commissioner Monica Murrow could not make it tonight due to an illness in her family. With that, I will take a roll call, please. Please register your, your attendance. You have 20 present, one absent, you have a quorum. Thank you very much. At this time, I'll take anybody that would like to speak to items on the agenda. Seeing no hands, we will go forward to, actually, I'm going to take a point of privilege as the, as the chairman and try to offer a sense of explanation for the people in the room as well as for other commissioners that might be a little bit lost like I am on some of these issues that come from the planning department. The, when we receive something from the planning department, it gets put onto the agenda because the planning department, the planning committee is a recognized committee of, this, of the commission. We have to set a public hearing for their recommendation that came out of committee to be put forward. That's what we had tonight was the, was the public hearing on that. After the public hearing is held, the agenda committee has to vote whether or not to forward that resolution, those proposal amendments, forward to the full commission for a vote. If it does not pass, this body to go forward to the full commission for a vote. It cannot, it does not go back to planning department. It sits here for up to, uh, till next September, at which time the exact same resolution can be brought again by the planning commission. If the planning commission at that time wants to bring it forward again. If it is substantially changed by the Planning Commission between the time it's voted on tonight, it can come back up before September, but it takes the action of the Planning, or the planning Committee to substantially change the legislation. If it goes forward from here to the full commission and it is voted down at the full commission, it dies until next September in both the Planning Commission and this full body. It cannot come back again for a full year, regardless if substantial changes are made or not. Does everybody understand that about as clear as mud? So what we have here is, and I'm going to use the example that I had put onto the agenda of item number 10. The request concerning reconsideration of the resolution to amend Ridgetop Development. It died in the agenda committee last month, and when I say died, it was not approved to be forwarded. Therefore, the only way that this issue can be reconsidered before next September of 2013 is if it comes back from the Planning Commission with substantial changes. That's the only way it can be put back onto the agenda for a vote. Now then, if it comes forward from the Planning Commission with substantial changes, it can legitimately be put back onto the agenda to be voted upon again. But if there are no substantial changes, then it cannot be brought until next September. If it had passed here and gone to the full commission and then died at the full commission and not been approved at the full commission meeting, even if the Planning Commission did substantial changes next month, it would not be proper to come back until next September. So they couldn't change it in January and bring it back. It is time barred until next September. 
No, sir, you may not. Um, yes, you may, Mr. Samples. Substantial change would be determined by, at the time by the chairman of the committee that, is re, that, that they're asking it to come forward to. So at this time, I'm the, I'm the chairman of this committee. So if I don't believe that there's been substantial change, then I have the right to rule as chair that it is not proper to be before this committee and therefore it should not be put onto the agenda. I have a follow-up. Can this body over if the chairman were to decide that substantial changes had been made, can this body not vote and reverse the decision of that chairman? This body does have the right to Thank reverse the, the decision of the chair. Yes, Mr. French. If, if, uh, if there are substantial changes made, is it not required that we have to set another public hearing? That is correct. That? It okay. has to come back through. That's, the proper chain is it leaves the Planning Commission. It comes to us for setting of the public hearing. Where it would be caught if there were not substantial changes is, would be on us deciding to set the public hearing. At that very first moment, we would read the new resolution and while waste taxpayer dollars having something run in the paper if it hadn't been substantially changed. Does that make sense, Mr. French? And I know I'm going off beat, but I really feel like that we need to get this issue resolved before we even set the agenda because we have two issues tonight that this directly affects and it could directly affect the amount of time and debate we spend this evening. Um, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma yes, Ms. Lambert. Whether we vote it down tonight or pass it on to the full commission and it's voted down or passed there, we still have a year. Is that correct? So it doesn't matter if it's killed here or in the commission, it can come back in a year. Correct. It, by default, it can always come back once a year. Yes, Mr. Main. Orders of the day shall go forward. At this time, I will take approval of the agenda committee minutes. I'll, we have a first, we have a motion made by Mr. Moon and a second by Mr. Lewis. All in favor of approval of the minutes, please vote yes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd just like to request that the budget increase items be considered separately. That's G2, those three items. Thank you. Mr. Fulcher, are you seconding the agenda of subject two because we have a motion but we don't have a second? We no. I'll second. With that <coughs> provision. Ms. Lambert made the motion. <coughs> seconded Mr. Fultz's request that the budget items be split. Is that correct, Mr. Fultz? Yes. Mr. Farmer, you're recognized. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. In line with your previous statement concerning to this, if you go to item G10, uh, is there substantial change in order for this to be back on the agenda, in your opinion? No, Mr. Farmer, there is not substantial change. Then. In line with that, it should be removed from the agenda. <coughs> Mr. Farmer has asked for removal of G10. Mr. Fultz has asked for a split of G2 or of uh, budget items. Mr. Wright. <clears throat> Apparently there's concerns about this and there's no way we could find out what those concerns are, address them and correct them, unless we take it 
to the commission where we can discuss it in open forum and find out what those concerns are. And having said that, then that's, I think, in my opinion, that's what we need to do. We need to reconsider so we can find out what the problems are and then refer that back to the uh, uh, Planning Commission, the Ad Hoc Committee, and then bring it back to the Commission as a corrected uh, uh, resolution. But we can't fix it. We can't fix it unless we know what the problems are. Well, Mr. Wright, Mr. Moon, you have a point of order. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. At any time, a, 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 vote, a vote on the prevailing side when business is not on the floor can move reconsideration. Not necessary to be on the agenda, in my opinion. Mr. Moon, I, 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 I understand where you're coming from, but I believe that on motions to reconsider, those expire once the meeting has been adjourned. No, it's good for one quarter, I believe, sir. Or until, uh, unless if there are regularly scheduled meetings. Yes. And that issue, we can let the parliamentarian issue a decision on that one. Mr. Parliamentarian, can you tell us if this would be, even be proper for a motion to reconsider? Because it was properly before the committee, the committee voted on it, no motion to lay aside or to reconsider was taken before the adjournment of the last committee meeting. So is it still good for a quarter or is it permanently barred until next September? If, the, if it doesn't get on the agenda, if, we, if it's pulled from the agenda, then I, <coughs> then I don't think it matters. It has to, it, it, if it's not a part of this agenda, it's, it's, it's no, there's no business to do. But if there, but according to what Mr. Moon has said, is that since it was a previous motion at any time for up to three meetings afterwards during the same quarter, it can always be brought back up as old business or as for reconsideration for, uh, for a motion for reconsideration. That, so in that sense, it wouldn't have to be on the agenda at all. It has to be made by the prevailing. The prevailing size has to move and it has to be duly seconded. Correct. So for this meeting, is, it, is this motion still, is this motion still ripe for a motion to reconsider? Not if it's, not if it's deemed that there's not substantial change to the motion and it doesn't become a part of the agenda. Okay, so in other words, for it to be ripe for a motion to reconsider, it has to have substantial change and it has to be on the agenda. It would have to be a part of the agenda anyway. Okay. Mr. Fultz. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Now, this doesn't need any more discussion. It got a whole bunch of discussion last, at the last, last month. We discussed it until we were tired of it last month. So I don't, I don't see where that has, this has any place on the agenda. I agree with Mr. For, Commissioner Farmer. This, uh, this G10 doesn't belong on the agenda. Mr. Kirby. Mr. Kirby, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. If it's pulled off the agenda tonight, and it's out there, so it'll go back to the Planning Commission for a major change, and then brought back to you before it's put back on the agenda, right? As of right now, it is dead. The Planning Commission, it has not been referred back to Planning Commission. Planning Commission would have to independently reform the ad hoc committee to study it again because the ad hoc committee that was set up to establish to look at this has already forwarded it to the Planning Commission, therefore that ad hoc committee has terminated. Once that ad hoc committee terminated, the Planning Commission then forwarded it on to us. So Planning Commission has to decide if it wants to recreate an ad hoc committee to study this issue again at which time it has to forward to us substantial changes.
Okay, thank you. Mr. Wright. Again, <clears throat> we don't know what the concerns are unless it's discussed in open form of the county commission. You can send it back to the planning commission and run it through the ad hoc committee, but how are you gonna know what these commissioners' concerns are unless we do that? We don't have anything to go by. We don't know what your concerns are and we have to discuss that in an open meeting of the planning commission. And that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to fix the problem, but we don't know what the problems are. We can't find out what the problems are unless you bring it back to the commission and you all tell us what we need to work on. That's what we're trying to do. Based on the earlier, your earlier uh, discussion, are you ruling that this is not a part of the agenda? If that's the case, we are wasting time. What is your ruling, Mr. Chairman? My ruling is that substantial changes have not been made. Do I have a, a, a request to, to vote? Mr. Farmer. May I talk first since I got my button pushed? In line with that, Mr. Chairman, my whole point was before we set the agenda, it needs to be removed. And that needs to be stated when we set the agenda. I would also like to request that item 3A be split and voted on separately prior to setting the agenda. Thank you, Mr. Farmer. So what we have, to be clear, we have a splitting of 3A to take up the appointment of Mr. Williams and Ms. Keller separately. We have the split of items G1 and G2 and G3 to where each of those items are individually discussed. And we have the removal of G10 that it should never even been on the agenda in the first place based upon the previous point of order made by the chair. With that being said, I will take entertain a, a vote, call discussion closed and vote on approval of the agenda as just stated. The agenda is set. We will now then go to items on the consent calendar. With the exception of, I will, I'm gonna modify your, your motion because we have had a split for sections 3A into two separate. Are you asking that 3A1 and 3A2 be moved as well? That's my. So, Mr. Samples, I understand that you're asking for approval of the consent calendar for items E1 and E2. <clears throat> Mr. Moon seconds. Any discussion? Seeing no discussion, please vote. Mr. Mann? We have 19 yeses and one, one no. Items E1 and E2 are forwarded to on to the full commission. I will entertain approval of E3A, Blunt Memorial Hospital Board, Clarence Williams to forward his name forward to the full commission for approval to the hospital board. So moved, Mr. Chair. Uh, motion made by Mr. Moon, seconded by Mr. Samples. Any discussion? See no discussion, please vote.
Mr. Samples. There it goes. If 19 yeses and one abstain. Mr. Williams' name shall be forwarded to the full commission for approval to the Blunt Memorial Hospital Board. At this time, I'll entertain a motion to forward Susan Keller's name forward to the full commission for approval to the Blunt Memorial Hospital Board. So we have a motion made by Mr. Samples. Second. Second by Mr. Fultz. Any discussion? Seeing no discussion, please vote. Mr. Moon. If 11 yeses, five noes, four abstain, and one absent. Ms. Keller's name shall be forwarded to the full commission for approval on the Blunt Memorial Hospital Board. At this time, unfinished business. I don't have any notes of any unfinished business, so we'll move forward into G1, budget transfers. Mr. Venue, would you like to enlighten us tonight? You have before you two uh, proposed transfers. These I would characterize as housekeeping as we presented to the budget committee yesterday. They both have to do with charging insurance for retirees and um, to the account where the payroll was paid. They were inappropriately charged to the wrong account. Now we're just putting it back in the account they belong. Thank you, Mr. Vineyard. I'll entertain a motion because these were all asked to be uh, separated out to approve. Uh, <coughs> the first one that I have in front of me is highway maintenance of equipment, $23,556. I entertain a motion to forward that to the full commission. So moved, Mr. Motion made by Mr. Lale, seconded by Mr. Hasty. Any discussion? Seeing no discussion, please vote. We have 20 yeses. The item passes and shall be forwarded to the full commission. The next item I have is a uh, second housekeeping item is highway maintenance roads for $62,372. I'll entertain a motion to forward that to the full commission. Motion made by Mr. Lewis, seconded by Mr. Wright. All in favor, I am, any discussion? Seeing no discussion, please vote. Motion is forwarded on to the full commission for, at this time we have three items dealing with budget increases. I'll first entertain a motion for uh, general county emergency management for $102,467.23, any uh, a motion? Motion made by Mr. Kaler. Second. Second by Mr. French. Any discussion? Seeing no discussion, please vote to forward the item of forward to the full commission. We have 20 yeses. Motion shall be, or the, uh, the budget increase shall be forwarded to the full commission. Next I have item is uh, $57,306.76 for a grant for a covered bridge project. I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Wright has made the motion. Second by Mr. Kirby. Mr. Fultz, your light is lit for discussion. You have the floor, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'd like to hear a little, uh, a little more about this uh, from Mr. Vineyard, if possible. <coughs> What's this all about? Mr. Vineyard, let me get your lights turned on and 
Stay lit now. No, sorry. Uh, first off, if I may um, recommend in the first paragraph, the $13,033, that needs to be changed to $17,787 to match the number below. I apologize, that did not get corrected when we made that amendment yesterday. Uh, this project dates back, based on my research, to 1996. At that time, the Blount County Commission approved a project of about $200,000 to cover this bridge. Uh, the commission voted in favor of it. It was a 20% grant for a $200,000 project. The money, best I can determine, was never fully appropriated for the match that the county was to provide. There were monies expended for design work. Since that time, design work has been uh, performed. The project now has been updated based on today's costing analysis, and the proposed project today costs some $280. $6,000 and change. Uh, the 20% grant for the county's po portion of that funding amounts to $57,000, $57,307. The recommendation that comes before you is that the source of the county's funding for that match is $39,000 and some change that is in a contingency capital fund account in Fund 189 and the balance of the match would come from a transfer from the development office in the county's general uh, fund in amounting to $17,700. Mr. Fultz. Has this thing been built? No, this is merely to it started get- Started in 96. Oh, Mr. Fultz, if you, if you have a question, please direct your question to the chair of the chair. Okay. The uh, it started in 96, and it's not yet been built, and we're talking about appropriating money for it? Is that, can that be true? I guess if I'm going to summarize your question, Mr. Fultz, what you're asking is, have, has the project <clears throat> been built, and we're just now then funding it? I, I don't understand the question you're asking. Well, I, I thought it was pretty clear. I mean... We were told that this project started in 96, and today we're being asked for $57,000. Well, I think I'll, then I'm going to ask it this way, Mr. Fultz, and if I'm not correct. Mr. Vineyard, has the, have we physically started construction on the bridge? No, sir. Is this the first budget allocation that we've ever made towards the construction of the bridge? Uh, no, sir. This would be the second best my research can determine. This so, is merely an a approval to proceed with a grant application for the project. We're bringing to you a suggested funding method for that and a resolution approving the project. And if that were to be approved, we would submit the resolution with the application that would go to the state. The award would likely not be made until somewhere around the end of this fiscal year, which would be somewhere in June. All right, Mr. Fultz, did I, did I ask the question that you were trying to, to ask? Yes, thank you, but I, I've got another one. This 189 fund that we're taking the money out of, that's that fund that's been used as a piggy bank. That fund started the year at over $600,000. After this is taken out of it, it'll, there'll be 150,000 left. Between July and now, we've almost exhausted that rainy day fund. And with the kind of budget problems that we're facing, the fact that we're even talking about this is beyond comprehension. Any other questions, Mr. Wright? Uh, Mr. Vineyard, I think that money was previously, previously the 39000 was previously uh, appropriated for that bridge and that's what we're using is that correct there there was an eleven thousand nine hundred dollars of that that was originally appropriated for this project but the full amount the full 20 percent was never appropriated best i can determine from my research but eleven thousand nine hundred and some odd dollars of that thirty nine thousand was designated for this project 
Okay. Any other questions, comments, or discussion? Mr. Carver, you're recognized. This is an existing bridge that if we, if I understood from the meeting last night, if it's not, if this covered uh, bridge part isn't placed on there, it'll, the bridge will continue to deteriorate to where it may have to be taken down, which would cost extremely large amount as opposed to covering it and protecting it. Is that correct? From my understanding from last night. Mr. That, that is correct. The bridge has been closed to vehicular traffic. The proposal is to cover the bridge so that it can be utilized as part of the trail system. If the bridge is not covered, by covering the bridge, you extend the life of the bridge. If you don't cover it, then there is a likelihood that the bridge has to be taken down and taking down some asset like that in today's environmental uh, criteria will be very costly. That was my understanding last night that T-Deck would be involved because it is going across the Little River and uh, just the cost, I can't remember, hundreds of thousands in regards to 57. So just a, something to take into account. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Carver. Mr. French. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My understanding is a previous commission in 96 approved the, the project, is that correct? And if, and I guess the second part of the question is, how come it's taken so long to get to it? I, I'm just curious. I'm just curious. The, Mr. Does anybody have the answer to Mr. French's questions? Mr. Samples, I'll recognize you to answer it. It did start in 1996. Some of you were here. Ken, I think you were here with him. I, I think it was chairman at that time. I met in numerous meetings. The reason that it was started then and then dropped, um, the state was then under Governor Sundquist, and they felt certain that that uh, grant was going to go through. When Governor Bredesen came in, they redirected the money, so the money fell through. Now. Now, the state has said we're ready to come back. They've already provided the, the drawings. There was actually even a scale model of the bridge built. I've seen it myself. And uh, Mr. Carver is correct. Mr. Dunlap told us last night that, you know, it's, it's basically the difference in spending this money to keep the bridge, make it useful, or face TDEC telling us that we have to remove the bridge from over the Little River, which could amount to $300,000 to take it down. Now, that, and am I, am I remembering correctly, Ken, is that the way you remember it from 96? Does that answer your question? Mr. Harrison, you're recognized. Uh, uh, just this, the bridge beside it was was subcontracted through the state, and and this is this has been in plans for a long time. Uh, I couldn't remember exactly why that it was put on hold, but just thinking of it and listening to the citizens of Blunt County, and even myself when I travel and go camping or go to Virginia, we look for covered bridges and things to see in the fall, and I think that this would be a, a a huge asset to the citizens of Blunt County. Uh, it, it sounds like it would be a cost savings versus a, an expenditure. Uh, this, I think, will be a land landmark in the future for Blunt County. Uh, I, th I think it'll be something that the citizens of Blunt County will be proud of. Be on a lot of posters and pictures. Uh, this seems like a great thing, and a, and a, a grant like this is, is a very rare thing, and uh, I think we ought to take advantage of it, is just my opinion on this. <clears throat> Mr. Hasty, Is this grant that we're uh, 
with this bridge is that uh, do we pay that back or is this just a state's part of helping us mr vineyard you know the answer to that question if i understood the question we would be applying the east tennessee development district is preparing the grant has agreed to prepare the grant application if you agree to proceed and we only incur the expense of the match if they award the grant and we will not know that until june early july i'm merely bringing all pieces of it and presenting the total story to you so you have full disclosure up front before you take any action miss lambert you're recognized mr chairman i call for the question <laughs> We have a motion to call for the previous question. It has been seconded. All in favor, vote aye. Aye. All opposed, vote no. Nay. Ayes carry it. Therefore, we will now then move to the full vote as to whether or not to forward this on to the full commission for approval. Please vote yes to forward this, this uh, increase in other capital projects fund forward to the full commission for approval. Voting yeses and one no. The motion shall be the uh, resolution shall be forwarded on to the full commission for approval. I'll now entertain a motion to forward on to the full commission for approval uh, amendment to the general fund budget for seventeen is for seventeen thousand seven hundred eighty seven dollars and forty seven cents. Do I have a motion? Motion made by was it Mr. Lewis. Mr. Melton, seconded by Mr. Carver. Any discussion? Seeing no discussion, please vote. Is 19 yes and one no. <clears throat> This resolution to amend the general county fund shall be forwarded on to the full commission for, for approval. And at this time, I think we have an other budget item, which I have as a resolution authorizing submission of application for Townsend Covered Bridge Project grant. Do I have a motion to forward this on to the full commission for approval? So moved, motion made by Mr. Moon, seconded by Ms. Lambert. Any discussion? Mr. Fultz, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, we've been told that this bridge will last longer if, if we put a cover on it. Of course, it's lasted 16 years between, beyond the first time they talked about putting a cover on it. Uh, doesn't this strike anybody as a little bizarre? Um, does anyone know how long it's expected to last if we spend this uh, 286000 plus our 57000 on this thing? Is it going to last three more years, ten more years? Do we have an answer to that question before we authorize this? Does anybody have an answer? Mr. Vineyard, do you, do you know the answer to that question? I do not know the answer to that. I think they, it was stated that the bridge was constructed in 1915 or 16, somewhere along in there, maybe early 20s. Oh, so, so it's, it's made it from 1915 to now, and, and we're, we've got to rush out and spend $300,000, of which 57000 is county money. It's not a grant. 57,000 of that is taxpayer money. And we gotta rush out and put a, put a, a cover on this thing because so to the last a few more years, we don't know how many, but it's been there since 1915. Wow. Wow. Thank you. Mr. Wright, you're recognized. 
This is uh, in regards to what Mr. Folt's comments are. That bridge was used as a main thoroughfare, a thoroughfare, which had a lot of uses and a lot of heavy loads on it without a cover on it. But now that uh, we're going to use it for something other than that, the life, of course, will be uh, increased somewhat. The cover on the bridge will protect it from probably from now on. But if we do not put the cover on the bridge, then there's a possibility that we may have to remove it. Now, that being a class two scenic river brings on a heck of a lot of, ex of uh, expense if you have to remove that bridge, which is a county bridge. And having a construction background, I can guarantee you it ain't going to be less than a half a million and probably $800,000 in the way that it has to be removed uh, if we have to remove it. Mr. Moon, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I think the question here is, are we willing to make an investment in something that will improve the appearance of that area? First thing a person sees when they drive by out of county or out of state is a big close sign. That would remove the close sign and also make something that's scenic would benefit the county overall. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Moon. Mr. Melton, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, th I don't know whether it's been mentioned or not. All this, is, for years, it's been trafficked by automobiles and trucks. Now it's only going to be foot traffic and bikes and everything. So I just wanted you to know that. That, that bridge is, uh, we've built a new bridge, and this is a, an old bridge that's been there ever since I can remember. And uh, I agree with most of you, the environmental situation there, if you take that bridge down, and, and we were told last night it would have to be down and everything, and the cost alone would be tremendous. Thank you, Mr. Melton. Any other discussion? Seeing the board clear, please vote to forward this on to the full commission for approval. You have 19 yeses and one no. The resolution shall be forwarded on to the full co full commission for consideration. At this time, G4, resolution authorizing an annual commitment for telephone service for the Blount County Annual Care Center under Tennessee Code Annotated. I'll entertain a motion to forward this to the full commission. Second. Motion made by Mr. Sample, seconded by Ms. Lambert. Any discussion? Seeing no discussion, please vote. You have 20 yeses. Motion shall be forwarded on to the full commission for consideration. Next is resolution to amend the zoning resolution of Blount County, Tennessee by adding a new section 7.18 design standards for commercial campground and recreational vehicle parks. Amend section 9.1B, 9.2B, and 9.3B to include commercial campground and recreational vehicle parks and amend section 13 to include definitions for camping cabins and commercial campgrounds. Entertain a motion to forward this on to the full commission. Motion made by Mr. Kirby. Do I have a second? Yeah, I have a second. Second by Mr. Wright. Any discussion? Mr. Fultz, you're recognized. Isn't it time to put this thing out of its misery? <laughs> Keeps coming up. We don't need it. I make a motion and it has precedence that we uh, put, uh, essentially kill it. That is a motion to postpone indefinitely. We have a motion on the floor to postpone indefinitely. Do I have a second? Correct. Is that correct, Mr. Parliamentarian? Okay, motion to postpone indefinitely does not is not proper at this time.
therefore we'll continue on with the discussion on the issue. Any further discussion? Seeing no discussion, Mr. Wright, you're recognized. Yeah, I'd like to bring out a few things. First, the last time this came up, we addressed concerns, commissioners, if you all remember, and we made a, a list of those and took them back to the ad hoc committee. I was part of it, of the planning commission, and we went through every one of them and addressed all of your concerns. We reduced uh, the distance, uh, the length of stay, the whole nine yards, and if we have additional concerns, we need to get them in one sack so we can address them. So if you'll excuse the expression. Uh, but I would like to point out a few things here that, that may, we may or may not have thought of. And we've done quite a bit of research on this, and, and especially in other states. The 210 days, for instance, uh, it doesn't matter whether you've got 15 people staying there or one pe person staying for 270 days. And most of the states, like Colorado, does not have a length of stay. Uh, actually, you might increase the safety by not having as many people moving out and in the campground. The other thing we did is we increased the buffers to try to protect uh, people that's in or near the camp proposed, proposed campground areas, which is very few. Uh, we have a lot of other businesses in R1 district, which there's a lot more noise and traffic, and I can take take and show you to them, show them to you that that's worse than campgrounds. Uh, let me back up one thing. On the 210 days, a person pulls their camper up there on a campsite, only they don't stay in it 200 and day, 210 days. They come up on the weekends. We get a lot of revenue in here from out of state and Tennessee, and so we need to consider that also. That's one of the things that came up nationwide when we pulled up our information from the computer. Uh, so you can't tell one business that you can locate there and not another one. And we have a lot of commercial businesses right now in our R1 district. That was, that was great. Uh, no, uh, t uh, and those businesses were not all grandfathered in. Uh, the the migrant workers, they do not want in these campgrounds simply from the fact that everybody else would leave. That's a no-brainer. Uh, and uh, the owners are not in favor of doing anything like this at all, period. And then, of course, you got the third and final, or the, the thing, other thing, and I'm not pushing past uh, campground regulations one way or the other, but these are just some of the facts that we found out. But people who owns property that wants to put in a campground, they have got property rights too, so we need to consider those, just like we would if somebody wanted to put in a, uh, a filling station or a mini mart. So I just wanted to point out those things, commissioners, of what the surveys and stuff we did that came up when we went back and reconsidered this thing. Thank you. Mr. Farmer, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. In line with your previous uh, discussion, all I want is clarification. If this not forwarded tonight, then it can be brought back with substantial change. However, if it's forwarded and voted down, it cannot be brought back for one year. Is that's, that correct, sir? That's correct. Thank you. Mr. Fultz, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I've heard it stated that um, this resolution tried to take into account what we heard at the previous public hearings. Well, I must have missed it. 
because what we heard at the previous public hearings was the citizens didn't want campgrounds in residential zones, period, simple. Number two, they don't want 40,000 pound RVs that are uh, eight and a half feet wide plus mirrors on both sides, add another foot, okay? So you got nine and a half feet and then you, uh, they don't, with a school bus coming the other way, they don't fit on an 18 foot road. Go through the math, that was brought up. People express concerns about noise. There's nothing in this about noise. There's nothing in this about fire safety. We've got RVs filled with diesel fuel and propane and they're allowed to be 10 foot apart. Now we got a bunch of firemen on this commission and I'd like to hear their views on RVs filled with diesel fuel and they have propane and oftentimes the propane tanks on these RVs are not well maintained and they're parked 10 foot apart. From a safety standpoint, doesn't that bother anybody? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Folks, but I, you know, I've involved, been involved in construction and I've rode these roads far more years than you have. And I go out here and I find concrete trucks which are wider, bigger, and heavier than RVs on these smaller roads. And it accommodates them very well and I don't find a whole lot of, of accidents on them. And they don't, they don't propose any more threat to the safety of the public than a concrete truck or even a tractor trailer truck, which they do pull into these service stations and places in the, that has commercial property in R1 district. These big trucks, commercial trucks, concrete trucks, gravel trucks, and I see them every day, every day on the county roads that I live on. And some of them are, are, are not 18 feet wide. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I guess the, the really one thing that really bothers me about this regulation is the length of stay. Uh, I think we have several people. I don't see anybody from the school system here in the audience tonight, but I think we have several commissioners that uh, work with the school system. It, it, what is it require? What, what's the requirement for students to attend school to make it a full year? Is it 180 days, I believe? Uh, if, if somebody knows, I, I think it's 180 days. So I, I guess I'm a little concerned that, that we're allowing, to me, camping is going out, and I enjoy camping. I go several times a year and uh, for about a three or four day camping stay, but I, I, uh, I, don't, I don't see 210 days as camping. Uh, that, that to me is, uh, setting up residence, and, and I don't, I don't believe we need to allow uh, someone out of state to go to our schools 180 days out of the 210 day schedule, and and just free of charge. I, I, that's just my personal opinion, but. Mr. Harrison, you're recognized. I, I, I thought we'd already discussed this for a couple of hours. I'm just wanting to move on and get this over with. <laughs> Mr. Fultz, you're recognized for your second opportunity tonight on this issue. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Concrete trucks. Um, one of these campgrounds can have in 10 acres, 250 RVs. 250 RVs coming in for the weekend on an 18 foot wide road. Um, 
you don't have 250 concrete trucks coming. Uh, that's not a good analogy. Uh, and these things just don't fit. The math doesn't work. They don't fit on 18-foot roads. They're eight and a half foot wide. Add another two feet. So you got 10 and a half foot wide. You need a 21 foot wide road, and that's if there's only an inch between them as they pass that school bus going in the other direction. You need 22, 23 foot wide roads minimum to be talking about this. And this, uh, how this can, can how a, a professional planner can put this down that an 18 foot wide, wide road is going to be okay is beyond me. I don't understand it. Thank you. Ms. Birchfield, you're recognized. Mr. Belton, you're recognized. I'd like to call a question, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Call for the question has been made and it's been seconded. I'm going to do a voice vote so we have to reset the board. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Hearing no, uh, no opposition, motion is made and carried. We will now then go to immediately to voting on the issue at hand, whether or not to forward on to the full commission the resolution to amend for campgrounds. As has been asked twice already and I said earlier, a vote in favor of this forges us onto the full commission. A vote against this kills it here where it can come back up at any time with substantial changes from the planning commission. So if your goal is to permanently kill this for up to a year, <laughs> you forward it onto the full commission where you kill it there. Everybody understand the game rules here? Yes. Sir. yes. We get, to kill it for, till next September, you got to approve it and then kill it next week. If you kill it tonight, it can come back with substantial changes. Thank you very much. Please vote. Motion is approved to be forwarded onto the full commission for voting. Next week will be a very interesting meeting. Sorry for the commentary. I forgot my microphone was on. Uh, I'll now the move for uh, G6 resolution amending resolution number 09080005 regarding the contract with East Tennessee. Motion made by Mr. Farmer, seconded by Ms. Lambert. All in favor or in discussion? Seeing no discussion, please vote. <clears throat> Motion is forwarded onto the full commission. Next up, resolution regarding the addition of additional portion of Custer Drive to the official roads list for Blount County, Tennessee. Motion made by Mr. French. Second made by Mr. Gamble. Any discussion? Seeing no discussion, please vote. Motion approved and forwarded on to the full commission. Next is resolution to approve an interlocal agreement to provide smooth, coordinated traffic flow between signalized intersections in Blount County, Maryville, and Alcoa. Mr. Samples made the motion, seconded by Mr. Carver. Any discussion? Seeing no discussion, please vote. Motion approved and shall be forwarded on to the full commission. Item 9, request for rezoning from R2 to R1 for a portion of the property located at 6250 Paul Boone Road, identified on tax map 126, 
in parcel 079. I'll entertain a motion to approve this for a hearing for a public hearing date of January the 8th, 2012, 6.30 p.m. in room 430. January 8th of 2013, 6.30 p.m. in room 430. Do I have a motion? Motion made by Mr. Kirby. Do I have a second? Second by Mr. Wright. Any discussion? Seeing no discussion, please vote. Motion shall be forwarded on to the full commission for setting of a public hearing. I have a motion made by Mr. Farmer, a second made by Mr. Moon. Any discussion? Seeing no discussion, please vote. The motion to allow safe passage for our friend from the North Pole shall be forwarded on to the full commission for, at this time I have no items um, that takes care of the new business. Any public input of items not on the agenda? Yes, ma'am, please come forward and please state your name. And I'm gonna get you lit up by the time you get up there. There okay. you go. Um, I'm Ingrid Hahn and um, I just wanted to make a comment in general about efficiency. Um, I, I know everybody is tired of discussing the campgrounds and discussing, uh, we've talked about the ridge tops quite a bit. And I just wanted to say that um, it's not realistic to expect county commissioners or planning commissioners to be experts in this kind of mumbo jumbo. Um, you would need a specialized degree and 40 hours a week to be able to keep up with just this stuff. I've looked at it. Here's how much I had to mark up the text of the campgrounds and the ridge top text was even denser and harder to understand. Um, you have a resource who does have a specialized degree and has 40 hours a week for which he is paid. Um, and I think that he should be utilized more. Um, I had occasion to attend a planning meeting in the city of Maryville, and a proposal was being brought forward, and the planner, I don't remember his name, uh, he provided to each of the members uh, a two-page summary. And he said, here's what the proposal is, here's the rationale for why we're proposing it, or why it's being proposed. Here's what it means because you know you you could spend hours cross-checking you know what is what is section 7.3, you know uh, he's breaking it down. He said, here's what it means. Here's why I think you should consider it. The rationale. Um, here's what I would recommend. And uh, let them go from there and it, and have a discussion. It was very clear. He cut to the chase with them, and I just would just like to see that happen. Um, Mr. Lamb was not part of the ad hoc committee on ridge tops until I think the very last meeting. I attended most of those myself. Um, there wasn't a boilerplate to start with to write the policy. And many years ago when I worked in Texas, I worked in education policy, and we provided boilerplates to elected officials for drafting policy in education because you don't want to start from scratch you know that's what you you need uh, the informed people to help you out and I would just like to see him used more as a resource and hold him hold him down and make him explain it because sometimes the way he talks it's kind of hard to understand and I've got a master's in English so um, just use him more. I think it would be so much more efficient. I mean, how many times have we gone around with both of these? And I won't take any more.
Any other comments? Request? Two announcements that I have to make. Commission meeting will be December 20th, 2012, room 430 at 7 p.m. The Education Committee meeting for December is canceled. I've heard a motion to adjourn. So adjourned. <laughs>